Hallelujah and blessings in Jesus, friends. Welcome back to Haya Kadosh Ministries, where holiness is a way of life, and Jesus is truly King of Kings and Lord of Lords. And together, God's people say, Hallelujah. Well, friends, I trust this finds you feeling blessed this morning and anticipating great things that the Lord shall reveal unto us through his living word. Now, today is July the 22nd in the year of our Lord, 2017, and this is one a day for the soul. Now, if you have your Bibles, turn to James chapter 1, and we're going to look at verse 27 this morning. It begins by saying, pure religion and undefiled before God and the Father is this, to visit the fatherless and widows in their affliction and to keep himself unspotted from the world. Now, let's just take a few moments and dissect this. Pure religion. In other words, pure service unto God. And what I mean by that is this. Strong's defines in the Greek this word religion as external, that which consists of ceremonies. Now, when we think of ceremonies, we think of maybe illustrious events, but a ceremony can be something as simple as prayer, your own private prayer time. It could be your worship. It could be your Bible reading. And we have to be very careful, as we've talked about in the past, with these things because they can become religious. You have to remember the Jewish people at this time were probably the most religious people on planet earth. And yet Jesus frowned on their religion because the emphasis was upon what they personally were doing for the Lord in thinking that they were earning his favor by doing such things. And aren't you and I guilty of the same thing? Don't we feel blessed when we have given unto the Lord our time in Bible study, time in prayer, I mean, if you've ever woke up in the morning and you've rushed out of the house and you didn't pray, maybe you felt empty. And it wasn't necessarily that you felt that you were walking alone as opposed to having invited the Lord into your day to walk with you, but you felt undone because you hadn't observed a practice that maybe you were familiar with. And the line that separates these two is such a fine line that we have to be careful on which side we are. And so what we find in this verse is the fact that God doesn't look upon what we're doing for him in observance to the religious rituals or practices that we have built up, but he's looking for something much different. And that's told to us in the end of the verse. But let's continue on. Pure religion and that religion that is undefiled, uncorrupted, unspotted, unblemished before the Almighty is this. It's not prayer. It's not fasting. It's not reading your Bible. It's not going to church. It's not memorizing scripture. It's not witnessing to other people and telling them of the love of Jesus. But this is what it is. It is to visit the fatherless, the orphan, and the widows in their affliction, in their distress, in their struggles. Now, the word in the Greek from the Strong's means this, to look upon or after, to inspect, to examine with the eyes in order to see how the person is, to go see one to look upon in order to help or to benefit, to look after, to care for, to provide for. It has this idea of caring for them, listening to them, talking to them, and maybe offering them direction and guidance so that they can look past the issues of their life that they're facing that could be very problematic for them and to look upon God the Savior as the help that they need in the time of their need. We can only provide them so much, 
but we serve a God that is the answer to all of their needs. And when a person is in the midst of their problems, it's as if they become so tunneled vision, they can't see any other solution. They can't find a way out. And so we come alongside them as guides to help them in their situations, paying their bills, buying them groceries, giving them money. These are all things that are momentary and bring both them and us satisfaction. But time and effort and patience and love is required to visit with them on a regular basis. We are to invest ourselves in them. And maybe they're experiencing some of the same things that we have experienced and we can share with them from wisdom because we have walked that path. And so we're not only giving them answers that sound like cliches, but we're giving them real life experience because we have passed through that situation. And we know what the other side looks like. And so James is telling us here the true reality of Christian practice that God finds honorable is to visit the orphan, the fatherless, and widows in their affliction. Now, in these days in Jewish history, these fatherless and widows were a frequent part of society. I don't know when the last time you have gone out to find the orphan, to find the widow, but they're not as easy to find today as maybe one time they were. I mean, you got to remember some of these small villages were a couple of hundred people at the most. In some of the cities we have in America, maybe most of the cities we have in America, people get lost in the sea of humanity. And so I think it would be fair to say that we should visit those who can't help themselves. We should visit the hurting. We should visit the lonely. We should visit the depressed. And we don't have to look very far to find these because they are all around us, friends. All we have to do is listen. And then James finishes by saying this Christian practice, which God finds honorable, is twofold. It's two-sided. On one side is to visit these who are living in distressed situations, but on the other side is to keep oneself unspotted from the world. And we know how we do that. We identify the world by what the majority celebrates, by what the majority accepts, by what the majority approves of. And the Spirit of God is grieved within us when we practice these worldly things. So we don't need anyone to point them out to us because we can feel the grievance of the Holy Spirit, what we would call conviction in our souls when we participate in these things. We can define very clearly on a black and white scale what is holy and what is worldly, what is pure and what is unpure what is spiritual and what is fleshly. And that's what James is saying here. Well, friends, I love you. I'm so grateful that you spent a few moments with us today. I pray that the word of God is changing you in ways that you thought not possible. And I pray that your journey will be blessed as you walk with the Lord Jesus today. And he will put those in your path whom cannot help themselves. Now, as Yahweh wills and until tomorrow, friends, I love you and I'll see you on the next video.